Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at what a lot of people have been trying to do and have always wanted to do. And that is creating dynamic tabs using the oxygen tabs and the repeater element. I'm talking about something like this. Now this is an example of what I created earlier. Uh, this pulls in data from the WordPress post. You can equally pull in data from, from dynamic data, ACF repeaters, or any custom post types. The good thing about this is just very easy to do and you just don't have to write any single code for it to work, except maybe for, for the styling. Uh, so let's uh, jump into Oxygen. Actually, let's go to the back end. Um, I have a post set up. These posts are... Now, if we go to the back end, I just want to show you that I have posts set up, okay? Um, so these posts, question one, two, or three, uh, the first three posts, if you take a look at inside, you're going to see that um, I have this content set up, a simple layout, and I do the same for for the three posts. Uh, so let me close this. Now, first thing we're going to do is to add a section. And inside that section, we're going to add two divs. So I'm going to add a div, and I'm just going to give it a class of section div. All right. And then I'm going to duplicate that and ensure that they are stacked vertically. Uh, the div is going to be 100% width. Now, inside the div, um, I'm going to add a repeater in each of them. So I'm going to go repeater. And then for this one, I'm going to add another repeater. All right. Now, this repeater is going to be our... I'm going to give it an ID of tabs, content... Um, you can give it any ID, uh, but this is going to be a tabs content. Yeah, tab contents wrapper is more like it. And then for this one, um, let me just rename that. Mm, what's that? Uh, let's select that the right thing for these this is going to be our tabs so i'm just going to rename that to tabs and this is going to be our tabs content so we don't get confused all right now for these tabs uh, we're going to give these two classes now these are the standard oxygen tabs classes so we need to use these classes we need to take advantage of the already existing classes so this will work so uh, I'm going to give it Oxy Tabs class, and then I'm going to give it uh, Oxy Tabs Wrapper class. Now the key here is, is in this first repeater. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it two attributes. The first attribute is going to be the standard Oxygen Tabs attribute. Now if you saw the Oxygen Tabs you, you'll see that the tabs wrapper has a data attribute called data oxy tabs content. Let's spell that right. Wrapper. So that's the name of that attribute. Oxy tabs content wrapper. Now what it needs is the ID of the tabs content this repeater will be our tabs content wrapper so we are taking that id and we're going to put it in that attribute now let me pin that attribute so we can see it in the primary tab and um, the next attribute we're going to put there is going to be now this also is a standard oxygen element tabs attribute so it's going to be called data oxy tabs active class all right, so we want to define the active class. Now we can use any class we want. So I'm just going to say um, dash active class or dash active tab class. Active that tab, yeah, active dash tab class is, is good. So that's just the class I'm giving it, okay? So now let's save this. Um, I'm going to start querying this repeater. So the first repeater I'm going to 
go to query custom query because we are not inside a post template we're inside a page so I'm gonna query the post if we were inside a post template uh, we would just leave it at default I'm just gonna query that as you can see it is querying all uh, the grids I think I already have those grids set up in my class in my previous test uh, I'm gonna limit that to three um, and uh, that is uh, showing the pagination uh, let's confirm that grid so in my trial I set up you know that grid in that in that class the oxytabs wrapper class so that's why it's applying right now so by default it doesn't happen so you have to go in and enable that and make it three columns set the minimum width to zero now we don't want that pagination um, as a quick fix I'm just gonna go into the pagination and set the font size to zero of course uh, there are other ways you can do that you could use um, advanced query uh, to set that up and remove the pagination but that's beyond the scope of what we are doing right now so let's not waste time with that so I'm gonna go to the repeater for the content and I'm also gonna query the post okay Now I'm going to do the same thing by, you know, limiting it to three. And uh, I want to add a heading and the heading is going to be an H2. And it's going to reduce that font size. And I want to, uh, let's give it a nice color first of all. Yeah, that seems good. I'm going to um, insert a dynamic data with, with, that will return the title of the post okay that's looking good um, the next thing I'm gonna select that div and then I'm gonna give it a padding of 32 pixels all around and then I'm gonna select the inside uh, of the tab content div and then I'm gonna drop a text and then I want that text to pull in the content Now, another way of doing this, uh, let me delete that text. Another way of doing this is by going into uh, the content is not coming forth. Uh, let's just go into WordPress, uh, dynamic data, choose content. It does the same thing. Now, um, we have that set up. Let's just save it and let's take a look at it at the front end and see what we have. So you can see that nothing works here. Okay, I have all my classes set up, but uh, definitely we need um, some JavaScript to get this working by adding and removing the classes. But I did say that this will be done with zero code coding, all right? And I meant it. So how are we going to get the JavaScript to work? Simple. Uh, we're going to insert the tabs element and then um, we have the tab element. So I'm going to take off the tab content and all these other markups so um, of course I'm gonna set it to display none now the reason I need this tab element is because that is one way we can bring in the JavaScript that will control the tabs so I'm just gonna save that and now this will save us our code block so to speak but we didn't write that code but we pulled it in from what oxygen has already made available so I'm gonna refresh this and you can see now this is working now what I want to do is uh, I'm gonna go back there and uh, clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna make my background color a little bit dimmer, uh, just like so. And yep. All right. And then um, I'm gonna give my tabs content div a uh, background of white. Clean it up. Uh, Giving a padding of 24 pixel all around. I'm gonna give it a border of 20 pixel um, I think I have a shadow that I copied uh, let's see okay there it is and I got that from this cool website called Abram shadows so you could see it there um, if you go to the website you can you know adjust the settings and then copy the code into oxygen so that's what I used now for this tab uh, let's uh, 
let's we take a look at the active class normally you can style the active class so if we check the code uh, you're going to see that um, when you click there it's supposed to add the active class but uh, doesn't seem to be happening so let's just take a look mm -hmm. okay let's um, check what's going on in here so we have that class active tab let's see what if we change that class I hope the dash is not causing any problem not quite sure if the dash has any issues uh, let's see mm, data oxy tab active class mm, I need to check that that is not correct um, this is not the right attribute the pro problem was not with the class um, the reason we're having that data attribute is to automatically apply the class of active to the tab uh, so we can style the active class so this is supposed to be ox oxy tabs active it's supposed to be data oxy tabs active tab class yeah so that was a mistake like I said this is a standard oxygen tabs classes so we need to make sure we type it correctly so you can see now it's working correctly and it's adding the the active class to to the tabs so uh, now we can use that active class to style it so to be able to style the active class um, usually we normally you know select the active class okay from the tab but because we are not using the regular tabs uh, what we're gonna do is gonna add a selector so I'm gonna add a selector um, what was the name of that class let's go back and check um, that was active tab class let's copy it and then we're gonna add a selector make sure you include the dot and then add it and then we're gonna use that selector to style the active class so we're giving it a background color and doesn't seem to be working mm, yeah that's the active class and then we have a background color yes so it probably we need to refresh the the repeater let's look at the front end oh yeah you see it's working here so it's supposed to work at the back end so let's see let's refresh the repeater and look at it again yep that works okay um, so we can go back to the selector and continue styling it uh, let's just make that a little bit lighter make it like light purple mm, okay that looks okay now for my tab element which is these um, want to give it a 20 pixel border okay that looks good so let's save that and take a look at the front end so you can style it the way you want we are basically done here so um, I'm just gonna explore um, the different ways we could you know style it you can use this to do anything you want to do you can use this to pull in data from any dynamic you know content so um, let's try to change the layout mm can change that and then can come there and uh, go to the grid layout let's see we can change that mm, the oxy wrapper turn that off yep so now we're gonna set that to uh, change the width to 30% and uh, perhaps reduce the font size a little bit mm. I'm just exploring the different ways of uh, a different layouts nothing much this is something you could do by yourself mm, that, what am I doing here um, I think I'm putting these values on the wrong divs so that is wrong so let's take that off and take this other one off so we're supposed to target the main parent divs yeah that one so we had that hundred percent on the class so we're gonna select the ID for that one and we're gonna set it to 30 percent okay all right that looks good um, okay what next I think let's stretch that um, we can see that it's not stretching so we need to find a way to make that grow in a feel um, typically you use uh, flex grow one to do that 
uh, let's see so that option is not available let's check the parents so we need to be sure that um, it's set to display flex for that option to be available to the child let's check which of the oh, that is the class okay so let's go back there and check in the layout Uh, okay, that option is available. All right, so that grows in. So we need to do the same to the tabs. So the tabs will fill in. And that fills in too. Uh, we need to give a gap between the tabs and the tab content. Um, that, I think we don't, I don't want a gap there. Let's, let's, let's give it uh, a gap between the tabs and the tab content. Yep, so that works. So you see we can have this sort of layout also on any kind of layout you want But this you know the beautiful part about this is all this data up dynamically pulled in and if you don't set a limit to the count You could actually create the type of uh, tab that will continuously add more tabs You know and dynamically you don't need to come into manually add the new tab to it. That's the beauty of this uh, so that's uh, that's all for now, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, um, if you did, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share this video to others. All right? Share it with others. Um, I'll see you some other time. Have a great day. Bye.